Hey guys, it's Matt Higgins. In this video, I'm going to go briefly over all of the cannon ships used by the Republic Navy during the Clone Wars. There's quite a bit to go over, so let's get started. Capital ships were the largest and most powerful ships in the fleet, and are well-rounded ships whose primary purpose was ship-to-ship -ship combat. The Venator-class Star Destroyer served as the primary attack cruiser for the Galactic Republic. These ships were specialized for carrying large amounts of troops, supplies, and vehicles, as well as intership combat. Having an all-around great design, these ships served as the backbone of the Republic fleet. A lot of people believe that the Venator-class Star Destroyer was the only capital ship in the Republic fleet. However, there are actually two. The Victory-class Star Destroyer was once utilized by the Galactic Republic. We do not have a canon appearance of this ship, but combining information from the canon novels Tarkin and Rogue One Catalyst, we know that the ship was utilized by the Republic during the Clone Wars. The Tarkin novel canonized the ship's name by establishing that Sentinel Base, an Imperial command post, was deployed from a Victory-class Star Destroyer. In Rogue One Catalyst, then, we got more information that Sentinel Base was once used by the Republic as a safeguard for the new Republic superweapon being built in the orbit of Geonosis. Therefore, it is canonically confirmed that the Victory Class Star Destroyer was once a part of the Republic Navy. The pictures I have shown you correspond to what the ship looked like in the Legends continuity, but additional canon information from Ultimate Star Wars does indicate that the Victory Class Star Destroyer is smaller than an Imperial Class Star Destroyer, which is consistent with the Legends version. Assault ships were smaller versions of capital ships that were not quite as powerful, but still found uses in the Republic Navy. The Acclimator class assault cruiser was primarily used as a troop transport with a carrying capacity of 16,000 clone troopers. These ships were used from the beginning of the Clone Wars, starting with the First Battle of Geonosis. The Acclimator class was able to adequately defend against attacks from other ships, but its shields were particularly susceptible to Separatist ion cannons. Thus, it was more suitable as a troop carrier and not an attack cruiser. Moving on to consular ships and corvettes, these ships varied in armament between lightly armed and unarmed, and also had a wide range of applications. The first ship in the class is the consular class cruiser. This cruiser was used by the Republic prior to the Clone Wars, and was used for carrying important Republic officials on diplomatic missions. Despite being unarmed, the ship carried powerful shields as a defense. An updated model, the Charger C-70 variant, was a lightly armed version of the Consular class cruiser and saw action during the Clone Wars. The Arkadens class cruiser was one of the more heavily armed ships in its class. The ship served primarily as an escort ship and was minimally staffed, only requiring two pilots. These cruisers were more maneuverable than the Star Destroyers or attack cruisers that they accompanied. The Pelta-class frigate served primarily as a medical transport. Wounded clones were transported to medical stations using the Pelta-class frigates that could stabilize their condition. This ship also saw use by the Phoenix Squadron Rebel Cell many years after the end of the Clone Wars. An unnamed stealth prototype corvette was field tested during the Clone Wars. The ship was very lightly armed, but possessed a cloaking device which made the ship impossible to detect visually. Later, the ship was used as a design template for Moff Wilhoff Tarkin's personal corvette, the Carrion Spike. The CR-90 corvette was used later in the Clone Wars by the Republic Navy. This ship was lightly armed and served purely as a diplomat transport. The CR-90 served long beyond its tenure with the Republic and would see further action as it was used as an attack craft by the Rebel Alliance and was even used as late as the New Republic era. The CR-90 was engineered as a replacement for the previous Consular class cruiser. Gunships served as the primary ferry for the Republic Army during the Clone Wars and came in two variants. The Low Altitude Assault Transport Infantry variant, or LAATI, was a gunship that specialized in troop transport. These ships were extremely versatile, capable of air-to-air -air and air-to-ground attacks. 
The LAATI was used throughout the Clone Wars and even saw action under the Rebel Alliance. The Low Altitude Assault Transport Carrier variant, or the LAATC, was a gunship that specialized in vehicle transport. These ships were designed primarily for carrying large ground assault units like the ATTE. The LAATC was used throughout the Clone Wars but was not as heavily armed as the infantry counterpart. Shuttles were similar to consular ships, but were instead primarily used for transporting individuals and not cargo. Shuttles made up for their lack of carrying capacity with more agility over consular ships. The Ada-class shuttle was used primarily by the Jedi Order for peacekeeping missions. Similarly, the T-6 shuttle was used by the Jedi Order for similar purposes as the Ada-class shuttle, but possessed no arms and was an older model. The new class shuttle was one of the larger shuttles in the Republic fleet and was primarily a transport shuttle. The new class shuttles were used throughout the Clone Wars and were phased out by the Lambda class shuttles during the reign of the Galactic Empire. The Theta class shuttle was used during the Clone Wars but saw most action under the Galactic Empire. This shuttle was used to carry Emperor Palpatine to Mustafar and transported Darth Vader's charred body back to Coruscant. Starfighters served as the grunts of the Republic Navy and are highly mobile. The Nimbus-class V-Wing Starfighter was a late arrival to the Clone Wars and only saw action in the final days of the war. These fighters were only armed with dual laser cannons, but made up for their lack of firepower in their speed and agility. Introduced in the second half of the war, ARC-170 Starfighters were considered to be the best starfighters in the Republic fleet. These starfighters were more heavily armed and possessed a hyperdrive. The ARC-170 starfighters were powerful enough to even combat enemy capital ships. Each starfighter had two pilots, a gunner in the rear, and an astromech droid. The predecessor to the ARC-170 was the Z-95 Headhunter. This starfighter model was not as strong as its successor in both firepower and range. V-19 Torrance served as the first interceptor fighter in the Republic fleet. Like most interceptors, these ships were light and maneuverable, but lacked the firepower necessary to perform critical attacks on capital ships. The V-19 Torrance were just beginning to be phased out over the new Nimbus V-Wing starfighters. Finally, an early model of the BTL A-4 Y-Wing starfighter was used prominently throughout the Clone Wars. This fighter served primarily in a bomber role and lacked firepower compared to other starfighters that were designed for intership combat. Additionally, the fighter possessed a bubble turret that an operator could use to defend the ship from other starfighters. A subclass within starfighters is those used by the Jedi Generals during the war. The first and oldest Jedi starfighter to see action in the Clone Wars was the Delta VII Aether Sprite starfighter. This starfighter was used by the Jedi prior to the Clone Wars and was designed with minimal internal tech and hyper-responsive controls that would allow the Jedi users to utilize their Force abilities when flying. Delta Sevens were considered to be primarily an interceptor and required a hyperdrive booster ring in order to travel at light speed. An upgraded model of the Delta Sevens, the Delta 7B, featured an additional pair of laser cannons, bumping the number from 2 to 4. Additionally, the Delta 7Bs were equipped with S foils, allowing for more advanced maneuvering. Finally, the Ada II Actis class was the latest Jedi Starfighter to see action in the Clone Wars. The Ada II was faster than both Delta 7 models and possessed even larger S foils for better cooling. Instead of four laser cannons, the Ada II had two laser cannons and two ion cannons. However, the Interceptor still had to use a booster ring for any hyperspace travel. So that's about it guys. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't, and subscribe for more prequel related content including lore, discussions, as well as anything canon about the prequel trilogy. Thanks guys, and may the force be with you, always.